Our scripture passage this morning comes from the book of Acts, the 14th chapter, verses 8 through 18. Listen, hear, and receive God's word for us today. In Lystra, there was a man sitting who could not use his feet and had never walked, for he had been crippled from birth. He listened to Paul as he was speaking, and Paul, looking at him intently and seeing that he had faith to be healed, said in a loud voice, stand upright on your feet. And the man sprang up and began to walk. When the crowd saw what Paul had done, they shouted in the Laconian language, the gods have come down to us in human form. Barnabas they called Zeus, and Paul they called Hermes because he was the chief speaker. The priest of Zeus, whose temple was just outside the city, brought oxen and garlands to the gates, and the crowds wanted to offer sacrifice. When the apostles Barnabas and Paul heard of this, they tore their clothes and rushed out into the crowd, shouting, friends, why are you doing this? We are mortals just like you, and we bring good news to you that you should turn from these worthless things to the living God who made the heaven and the earth and the sea and all that is in them. In past generations, the Lord allowed all the nations to follow their own ways, yet God has not left himself without a witness in doing good, giving you rains from heaven and fruitful seasons and filling you with good food and your hearts with joy. Even with these words, they scarcely restrain the crowds from offering sacrifice to them. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The last three Sundays, Pastor Randy preached a series of sermons based on the Hebrew book of Esther. The story of two women who in their day and context were mistakenly thought to only have significance or be of value because they were married to King Ahasuerus. King Vashti was mistaken to be a petulant and insolent woman. Esther or Hadassah was mistaken to be just a pretty face, pleasing to the king and a fitting and young replacement for Queen Vashti. 66 years ago, yesterday, August 28th, a 14-year-old youth from Chicago, while visiting his family in Mississippi, was abducted by gunpoint from his bed in the middle of the night by at least two white men. Driven to a barn 45 minutes away, Emmett Till was shot in the head. A 70-pound cotton gin fan was tied to his neck with barbed wire, and his body was tossed into the Tallahatchie River. Emmett was mistaken to be an uppity Negro from the North who assaulted and whistled at a white female store proprietor when in actuality his only transgression was his failure to place his money on the counter to pay for his gum. You see, had Emmett been raised in the South, he would have known that that was the appropriate way to pay for a purchase. Paul and Barnabas were on a missionary journey commissioned by the Holy Spirit. They were sharing God's word initially in a Jewish synagogue in Salinas, and then they traveled on to Paphos where they encountered a, a magician, a false prophet named Bar-Jesus, who failed to believe after hearing the truth. Conversely, Sergius Paulus, a proconsul and intelligent man, did believe once he heard the truth proclaimed by Paul and Barnabas. Leaving Paphos, Paul and Barnabas traveled on to Perga in Pamph Pamphylia, and then continued and arrived at Antioch in Pisidia, where they also entered into a synagogue, and Paul was invited to share a word of exhortation with the people. Paul began to recall God's faithfulness to the Hebrew people down through the ages, including the fulfillment of sending Jesus, the Messiah, from the posterity of David. Many Jews and converts to Judaism believed the word proclaimed by Paul, and Paul and Barnabas were encouraged to stay and share a word again on the next Sabbath. Now, according to Luke, the author of the book of Acts, 
close to the entire city gathered to hear the word that following Sabbath. And some of the Jews became jealous of the crowd and began to blaspheme and dispute Paul and Barnabas. There's always at least one hater in the crowd. However, the apostles spoke even more boldly when challenged and they proclaimed, it was necessary that the word of God should be spoken first to you, the people of Israel. Since you rejected it and judge yourselves to be unworthy of eternal life, we are now turning to the Gentiles. For the Lord has commanded us, saying, I have set you, Israel, to be a light for the Gentiles, so that you may bring salvation to the ends of the earth. When the Gentiles heard this, they were glad and they praised the word of the Lord. And as many had been destined for eternal life, they became believers. Now the word of the Lord spread throughout the entire region, and Paul and Barnabas, they were driven out. Theologian and commentator Willie James Jennings states, We see here again a tragedy rooted in vision-distorting fear and resistance to the spirit. The enemies of Barnabas and Paul would bring death to those who only wished to announce life. As Jesus previously instructed the twelve, Paul and Barnabas left Antioch, shaking the dust off of their feet, and traveled on to Iconium. Now they entered a synagogue in Iconium, and again shared the Lord's word, and there a number of the Jews and Gentiles actually believed. However, as was the case in Antioch, some Jews and Gentiles rejected the word and sought to stone Paul. The two fled the city of Lystra, fled to the cities of Lystra and Derbe and the surrounding country where they continued to share the good news. Stick with me now because I'm going somewhere. <laughs> In Lystra, Paul and Barnabas encountered a man unable to stand or to walk. The word of God said that he was crippled from his birth. However, this unnamed man was a man of faith. So when Paul commanded him to stand on his feet, the man immediately sprang up and began to walk. Now there were some in Lystra who worshipped the mythological Greek god of the sky, Zeus. You know, the one who was considered to be ruler, protector, and father of all gods and humans. And when they witnessed the miracle performed by Paul, they assumed that he and Barnabas were Greek gods, Hermes and Zeus, respectively. Now, according to a local legend, Zeus and his son Hermes came once to earth in disguise and no one extended hospitality to them. And as a result, Zeus and Hermes destroyed the entire population with the exception of two peasants, Philemon and his wife Bossus, who extended hospitality to them. And as a result of their hospitality, they were made guardians of a beautiful temple and turned into trees when they died. The people of Lystra had no desire to make this same mistake twice. So when they witnessed Paul perform the miracle of healing, they mistakenly assigned Barnabas, the silent one, the persona of Zeus, and Paul, the spokesman and healer, was mistakenly assigned the identity of Hermes, Zeus's son and messenger of the gods. As some would say, there's nothing new under the sun. Even today, people become in awe of their pastors and worship the messenger rather than the message. Charismatic and prophetic proclaimers with large congregations and followers are often assigned godlike status. They're often placed on proverbial pedestals and then begin to believe the hype themselves. Some, I dare say, most clergy answers the Spirit's call into ministry with godly intentions, with the love of God and God's people in their heart, and with every intention to serve faithfully, justly, and equitably. But when they begin to lean unto their own understanding, or, begin, or the lavish adoration begins to be exalted upon them, and cult-like status is mistakenly assigned to them, some very often experience a very, very public downfall. Pastor B.J. read earliest, earlier that the psalmist warns, do not put your trust in princes, in mortals, in whom there is no help. When their breath departs, they return to the earth. 
On that very day, their plans perish. But happy are those whose help is the God of Jacob, whose hope is in the Lord their God, who made heaven and earth and the sea and all that is in them, who keeps faith forever, who executes justice for the oppressed, who gives food to the hungry. The people of Lystra were so convinced that Paul and Barnabas were Hermes and Zeus that the priest of Zeus brought oxen and garlands of flowers to sacrifice at the city gates for them. But Paul and Barnabas, they weren't having it. They immediately tore their clothes and rushed outside shouting, friends, why are you doing this? We are mortals just like you, and we bring you good news that you should turn from these worthless things to the living God who made the heaven and the earth and the sea and all that is in them. Paul and Barnabas wanted to ensure that the people knew that they were not pagan gods, nor were they the God of Israel. They were proclaimers of the Lord's word to point people to the Messiah, Jesus, and that God alone, as Pastor Heather said, is worthy of the praise of all glory and honor. James Baldwin is quoted as saying, people who imagine their history flatters them or impaled on their own history like a butterfly on a pin and become incapable of seeing or changing themselves or the world. Close quote. People are often mistakenly identified as someone or something they are not. You know, some people are troublemakers. They're problems to be solved or eliminated. When in actuality, they are courageously standing up and speaking out for that which they believe. Other people are mistakenly identified as flawless, perfect, or without fault. When they too are flawed, imperfect, and have fault. But thanks be to God, we were all declared as good by God our creator, our forgiver, our perfecter, and we were made righteous by the sacrificial and faithful death and resurrection of Christ. And we are all kept, called, and sent by the Holy Spirit. Mistaken as mythological gods, Paul and Barnabas were mere mortals, empowered, commissioned, and kept by the Spirit of God. Mistaken to be disobedient, insolent, and petulant, Queen Vashti was a fierce, virtuous, virtuous woman of substance and perhaps a womanist of her day. Her refusal to be paraded before the king's drunken entourage took courage and a willingness to be replaced or even killed. Mistaken to be just a young and pretty face, Queen Esther was courageous revealed her true identity as a woman of Jewish descent and risked her life as a whistleblower in order to save her people. Mistaken to be a disrespectful, disrespectful uppity northerner and threat to the virtue of a white woman, Emmett Till was not just a 14-year-old out of his element. His life and vicious murder was the spark that lit the fire of the civil rights movement that continues to this day. 58 years to this day after the march on Washington, D.C. for jobs and freedom. People are often mistakenly identified as being someone or something they are not. However, in the economy of God, we are all the children of God, and it is by the grace of God that we may all live up to that identity. Praise God, people of God. May it be so. Amen.